Hi everyone! Um, if you're seeing us, please send us a heart or a like. Uh, we have Tanith Carey here. Nice to meet you. Hi. How are you? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> um, so we are going to discuss today uh, Tanith's latest book. And the reason I'm saying latest is because Tanith has actually written eight books. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, Tanith is also a journalist and her books have been translated into 15 languages. Yep. Mm -hmm. You've also worked in the United States. Yep. Um, so we have today, it's really a great honor to be um, talking to you. Um, I can still remember when I first came across this book and I thought it was so unique and so interesting. Um, so of course I've presented it to you guys as you remember. Um, and how I came across to actually chatting with Tanith is when I've asked for your permission to put a few mm -hmm. pictures and we've realized that both of us live in London. Yeah. <laughs> so that was quite amazing. So um, Tanith, tell us about how you moved between like journalism and also then writing in about parenting specifically. So how did you decide that parenting mm -hmm. was a topic you wanted to focus mm -hmm. on? Well, I mean, as a journalist, I've always been interested in underlying motivations and psychology and what makes people do things. Mm -hmm. And I've been a sort of foreign correspondent and news reporter and a crime reporter originally. But then when I had my own children, I was, I was just fascinated by their development. But then um, I didn't really understand at that point why they did the way they, the, the things they did, you know. Mm -hmm. and, but there wasn't a lot of information at that point for parents. Yeah. And I, I kind of felt that psychology wasn't being brought to a place where parents could access it. Mm -hmm. So all my books really look at very current issues that we have in parenting and what the research shows and how that can help us understand our children better. And then in understanding our children better, we can give them appropriate responses and connect better with them. So all my books have really been about that. Mm. So we're very lucky that you've mm -hmm. had your own personal experience and that you've found that there is a gap in the market. Mm -hmm. um, and in that sense, the book is truly, truly is unique and we're going to talk about the format, but um, how did you have the idea for this specific book? How did you? Mm. How did? How was this book born? In mm. a way, absolutely. Actually, it wasn't actually my idea. It was the D, it was uh, DK's idea, and they, as we know, they do amazingly, brilliantly researched, and beautifully laid out books. And um, I got an email actually from a uh, somebody at the publisher, and they they showed me this 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 layout, which is how it works. It's like what you think, what your child thinks. You know the kind of the conceptions, what the biases that you might be bringing to it, and how to break through that. And I just it was a eureka moment. I thought, oh my gosh, this is the book that I've always wanted to write. Mm. So it was just I just said, yeah, I'm, I want to do this book so much. And um, yeah, and uh, I'm now doing the follow up as you know on teenagers. And yeah. I just think it's just a great format because when we're stressed with our children, you know, our mind goes blank. You know, our stress responses mean that we don't think clearly. So what this book does is it just basically distills all that research. In, in a way, in a really clear way that parents can access it and access it in those really critical moments and mm. just stay calm and just, you know, get back to that inner connection with their child because they understand what the child's thinking. It's amazing because um, I've seen, I mean, most of the parenting books are by chapters and then um, this one, the starting point of it is the actual, mm. as, you, as you said, the moment. Yeah. It's that very specific situation mm -hmm. um, and you called it I think here there are over a hundred of these That's really day-to-day right. -day situations that yeah. can be either a bit frustrating for parents mm -hmm. or like mysterious for parents yeah and as you said it might actually even trigger mm. um, an angry response mm. so actually reading this um, book you know you actually find yourself almost um, expecting these situations to happen and knowing mm. how to respond to them so mm -hmm. I was wondering if we can actually sort of deep dive into one specific mm -hmm. example mm -hmm. and see the actual format, the actual chapter, because it is a, like almost like a template yeah. for each situation. Yeah. So you know what to find. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And just tell us a bit more about it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Okay, great. So because my audience um, and this specific group is all about, you know, motivating children mm -hmm. to be a part of family life. Yeah. Um, I chose this one, which is <laughs> I don't want to tidy up. Mm, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, I thought that might be quite relevant to my audience. So, mm -hmm. um, so it always, as you said, it always starts with yeah. So tell us about the headline. Yeah, exactly. So there's, as we say, there's more than one hundred flashpoint situations from I don't want to tidy up to I don't want to go to bed or I don't like this food or I hate her, I hate you, uh, and also really difficult situations. Like a lot of stuff gets glossed over in parenting literature. But so those those really difficult situations, like I say, when you what do you say when your child says they hate you? You know what kind of angst does that bring up on you? So yeah, we really tried to uh, cover every single common flashpoint, and it's divided into um, 
it's two to three year olds, four to five year olds, and six to seven year olds. And in each case, we look. Um, I, wrote, I, I should say I wrote, wrote this book with a, a brilliant um, child psychologist called Dr. Angarad Rudkin, who's got three children of her own, and I've got two. And we basically filter it through the developmental psychology. So obviously children are changing incredibly quickly at this age and their, their thinking, their rationale, their brain development is evolving. So basically in each case we will look at, at the situation through the window of that child development. So, so we've got this, we've got that, that's the problem. This is the summary and we have the scenario. So here we have the living room is littered with toys, but your child does nothing when you ask her to help them put, put you away. I mean, who hasn't been through that situation? Absolutely. And then basically all those uh, emotions that you feel as a parent, it's like, well, you might think, well, she constantly creates a mess for me to clean up. It's exhausting. Doesn't she care about all her things? So all these, this kind of inner dialogue, which actually in the moment is not helpful. So then we look at what she's thinking. So you, you, to connect with your child. She's thinking, well, I don't want my toys to disappear. And there are so many on the floor, I don't know where to start. So this, this and then obviously this is just a quick summary, but this taps into the fact that children can feel overwhelmed. When you put their toys away, they can feel like the toys the toys being swallowed up. It's going to disappear. It's never going to come back. If they've spent like 10 minutes creating, or sorry, half an hour creating a beautiful Lego village, and you're basically asking them to break that village all up, how does that feel to the child? So we need to acknowledge those things. We can get around those things. We can take a picture before we break it up. We can put it to one side. We can make tidying up fun. We could, um, we, there's all sorts of, and then so we go in the moment. So in the exact second, what do you say in that moment? Mm -hmm. And then we also look in, long, in the long term. So there's five different solutions. So I just want to show this to my audience, how amazing that is. <laughs> so because, you know, we have the in the moment, right? So this is dealing with the kids at the point that they are now. Yeah. things that we could do on the spot yeah. mm -hmm. but then you have also the long-term solution so how did you think about I mean that is a brilliant thing right mm. so we can sort of prevent things we can anticipate yeah things. exactly and also what I loved about it is sometimes the solution is also applicable for older kids mm. so if you have I you know if you have more than one child and one of them falls into this age cohort of two to seven yeah but then you have older children as well yeah don't put this book aside there's a lot of <laughs> tips here that are applicable for older children because yeah. you are giving the long-term solutions Absolutely. as well yeah, exactly. so how did you this is for me also like a wow that's brilliant how did yeah. you think about not only giving these tips mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. um for the moment but also for long term yeah absolutely because it's not just the what we do at that second and what we say it's just about how we think about our parenting generally and how we approach that situation so we can um head off these situations rather than react in the moment so there's mm -hmm. kind of reactive things and there's proactive things so that's how we divide it so. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also, there's also when it, like all these bits at the bottom. So what are they all about? So there's yeah. like one, two, three. Mm -hmm. So for example, here, uh, when the child says, I don't, you hear your child say, I don't want to try to tidy up. But what is your child actually thinking? What's actually going through her thought processes? So here, I mean, it looks short, but actually this is a contraction of a quite a lot of, quite a lot of child psychology here. But obviously I wouldn't want to bog you down with reams and reams of it. So here, for example, I go, when your child is absorbed in playing, it makes sense for her to have all her playthings spread out, but still with an easy reach. Then she can stretch her imagination and can create and create new games by using them together, making a house of bricks for her, her play figures and animals, for, for instance. And then basically underneath what you might think, while you may prefer uh, order and less chaos in your house, your child doesn't, doesn't, like you, see the mess as annoying. Most adults like to have homes for their things, sorry, most adults like to have homes for the things to be put away. Your child will need to learn this over time. So it's really kind of, I think, you know, we forget what it's like to be children, don't we, quite quickly. Yeah. And we think a lot about our anxiety and what we need to do in the moment. So it's really just about kind of getting back in your child's headspace so that you can communicate and connect and respond and not make a situation worse because this is a kind of situation that could easily get very very um inflamed or very irate and you can get all right and you can feel resentful and the child is just doesn't know how to respond the child feels overwhelmed so but i mean just by sort of looking into their minds and thinking what they're thinking then you can just r respond appropriately and keep things calm and mm -hmm. happier that's really the view of the amazing of the mm -hmm. um another thing i found really useful is that you know, as I said, every every piece of information on this page is like gold, right? So you have like related topics. So it's just like things yeah, like that. Things that cross really, referenced, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's just things like that that make it so user friendly and yeah. so reader friendly for a mom. So I'm like, let's say I have an issue with tidiness or something like that. Mm -hmm. There, then it's really well laid out. Which page? Which 
other pages I should go to if this is the issue I'm dealing with because they're all related in a way so I get a more like holistic solution to the situation um, but yeah that's what I'm saying it's, it's such a such easy to read in a day where our attention spans are like really really short <laughs> yeah. aren't they and we're used to sort of like bite-sized information yeah so instead of like learning on the entire psychology of two to three years mm. old um, you're coming from a specific point of need yeah you know like what you need what do I need at the moment and exactly. of course it also just the way it's illustrated and, and laid out is just so easy to read. So actually, maybe mm. I should read a bit more, you know, maybe I should read three or four more situations just to prepare. And there's a couple of things actually I'm thinking, um, I mean, a lot of people have say, oh, it, the parenting books aren't selling in the world because it's on the internet, but actually this is digested in such a way. I mean, you could spend hours trying to get to the bottom of this on the internet, but me and obviously, uh, and Garrod, we spend a lot of time looking at the research. We've compressed it all for you so that you know, I mean, this is not our opinion. This is the science. This is what the research says about child psychology child development development and it's just basically compressed for you to use right then and there mm -hmm. which is it is really the book that i wish i'd have on my child my children were small and what i was looking for you know amazing mm -hmm. um so tanith i also know you sort of mentioned in passing that you're working on a teenager yeah follow up <laughs> whoop, whoop. i have <laughs> two of them and a tween so i literally can't wait so by teenagers so if this is um until page until age seven yeah um how basically how what is the age that the next book would be tackling is it just for teenagers or does it also cover tweens yeah i think we'll probably do a tweens book next i mean after the, the teenage okay. but at the moment we're doing age 13 to 18. okay 13 yeah. to 18. yeah that, i think you are right because that is when parents again mm. are feeling lost yeah are feeling they are in need of some yeah, guidance definitely yeah um, um and that is when they will start looking for solutions and for advice yeah so we sort of had yeah. have it easy between age seven yeah. and twelve they go through a second to toddlerdom and then there's all the kind of rejection oh. that you feel and the peer group pressure that comes into it and their brains are being rewired and yes. they're under a lot of stress at school as well mm, I get so yeah, yeah socially yeah. yeah and all of that so yeah. mm -hmm. amazing so will it be in a similar format exactly the same format yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there will be slightly different pictures Actually, the other thing that people have told me is that um, parents love reading this with their kids because it's like emotion coaching ah. because they love the pictures and the kids go, yeah, I do think that. And they talk about they talk about the scenarios and whether or not they agree with what I've said about what they think. And then the parents talk about their emotions. So we're really, it's an amazing way of just really meeting in the middle and discussing and emotion coaching and talking about feelings and thoughts and you know what I mean? It's just, it works from that point of view as well. It's, a, it's yeah. fantastic yeah. because also, you know, I'm a great believer in ev like everybody in positive parenting, in yeah. validating our yeah. children's thoughts. Absolutely. And sometimes just understanding these thoughts because what they say is not necessarily the best way to, yeah, it's, it's very there's hard. so much yeah. behind. Yeah, and, and this book actually helps me validate the children's feelings. Mm. Like, you know, I see actually that you are a bit anxious about me putting the toys away. Maybe yeah. you're worried about this disappear. What do you think about that? And mm -hmm. then they're feeling, they, can, they feel heard. Yeah, exactly. But, um, but back to the teenager books, um, just thinking about my audience as well. And we talked about the issue of like a room, the mm. teenager's room, mm -hmm. you know, is it really like the epitome of, of their of their privacy or of their own world of their um, autonomy or mm -hmm. is it like a different situation so what do you think in terms of the psychology of a teenager's room mm. and how much should we really get into the whole mm. like helping them tidy it up or is it really their business what's what sort of not your take but yeah your and the, and the yeah. research behind it yeah i mean the, a, a room their room to a teenager i mean that they sort of they becomes their world it becomes their environment it becomes a statement of who they are it becomes a statement of their interests i mean it's fascinating to watch your child's room because your teenager's room because it also shows how they're developing you know the pictures they put on the wall is a statement about them you know so um we look at it as a kind of yeah it's their environment and they need as they start start to try and carve some privacy around them, it, it will become their world basically. So we have to be a little bit more sensitive about sort of insisting that they well not insisting, but basically asking them. So I mean, but then uh, at the same time, parents can feel very disrespected if their teenagers' room is a mess. They feel well, I bought all these things for you, and as you say, it's like the floor floor drobe. Mm -hmm. You know, all the clothes you just bought, you just bought her a gorgeous dress. It's on the floor. You're like, oh, you know, so you're triggered then. Yeah. So it's just a question of kind of um, in the same way as you would with a young child, it's kind of a little bit of a motion coaching. I think the research shows that um, 
uh, teenagers can only hold on to about three pieces of information at one time. So if you just go in and just say, oh, let's just tidy this up, do this, do that, do that, they're just going to close right down. Right. So, yeah. So in the same way as we say in that scenario, we like, well, you can break it down into steps. If you could show it's to their advantage, for example, your clothes, that dress is going to look an awful lot better mm. if you hang it up <laughs> um, and just talk it through. Yeah, and just see it from their point of view and just kind of don't feel that it's a slight on you. It's part of their natural brain development and, you know, they will emerge from it. Their house won't always look this bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about yeah just entering into that space for them as well amazing mm-hmm. amazing I think the teenagers will probably want what my mom thinking <laughs> 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 why is she on my case all the time yeah. at least I know my teenagers will definitely my, my kids will definitely appreciate that book but mm-hmm. um, yeah so that's that's all the questions I had to you today cool. but um, uh-huh. but thank you so much for coming um, mm-hmm. I know a lot of you guys already bought this book because you've written to me about it and how amazing it is but um, it was really a pleasure to have thank you here. Okay. So thank you. Okay. Thank and you. And thank you everyone. Okay, bye. bye.